it to a place that is blessed where your soul can find refuge your spirit find rest leave your burdens behind you and enter my peace take my yoke it is easy you will find sweet release come away come away my beloved come away come away come away my beloved come away are you thirsty tired so weary so worn is your heart heavy laden your mind tossed and torn streams of mercy awaiting your hope to renew come and drink from the fountain i am waiting for you come away come away The beginning and end, the God of the ages, Redeemer and friend, I am all you desire and all that you need. I fulfill every promise, I am faithful indeed. Come away. This time we're going to have Pastor Nikki Blanton come and share a really fantastic song that's got a whole lot to do with Brother Torrance. Before I uh, sing the song, Torrance happened to know that our redemption is wrapped up into the, the sacrifice of the Son of the Most High God. The Holy Blood is how we're redeemed without spot, the precious Lamb of God. And, and I'm, I'm so grateful to get, as a matter of fact, the reason my wife and I are here is I met Torrance up at Smith Mountain Lake and he invited us here. And, and uh, the, the, there, there are a few things that go into the, the ingredients of the solid rock, and uh, I'm not, not making a commercial for this church, but the solid rock of our salvation, the rock of Christ, comes with mercy, grace, and love. Amen. And Torrance knew this, and I'm so grateful for that. And he was standing, the mark of a Christian is the continual worship of the living God doesn't waver, you always know that he or she walks the same steps. Right. My wife mentioned this song 
And I thought, yes, this would be the song to do for Torrance. I dreamed I went to heaven And you were there with me We walked upon the streets of gold Beside the crystal sea We heard the angels singing And someone called your name We turned and saw this young man And he was smiling as he came And he said, friend, you may not know me now And then he said, but where? You used to teach my Sunday school When I was only eight And every week you would say a prayer Before the class would start One day when you said that prayer I asked Jesus in my heart Thank you for giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave Then another man stood before you said remember the time a missionary came to your church his pictures made you cry you didn't have much money but you gave it anyway Jesus took the gift you gave and that's why I'm here today Bye. For giving to the Lord I am a light that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave One by one they came as far as the eye could see Each life somehow touched By your generosity The little things that you have done The sacrifices made Unnoticed on the earth In heaven now proclaimed I know up in heaven You're not supposed to cry But I'm almost sure There were tears in your eyes As Jesus took your hand And you stood before the Lord And he said, my child, look around you for great is your reward Thank you for giving to the Lord I am a light that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave Thank you for giving to the Lord I am a light that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave I am so
so glad you came. Much, guys. I won't hold you but just another few minutes. But there's uh, some things that we really need to say. And what else can be said about Torrance? He meant a lot to us. He was one of our deacons. Uh, he came over from a church down in Alta Vista called Father's Word Church. Is that the right? I got that right? Been a long time. Father's Word Church in Alta Vista. Clifton Bowley was a pastor. Enough said. And Torrance was his first and only deacon that I know of. Now, the way that Torrance became a deacon was unlike any of the deacons we've ever had in this church before. Clifton told him, Torrance, you're going to be my deacon. And Torrance said, no, I'm not. And he said, well, we're going down in the woods here. And if we both come up back out, you're going to be my deacon. But if not, only one of us is going to come up. Clifton said, that's Lynch Station theology. I didn't, I didn't ask any more questions. And of course, they, they merged with, uh, with Solid Rock eventually. But he was always Clifton's closest friend and looked after him. Clifton would say many times, he said, I never had any money and I don't have good health, but God gave me a torrents. And Torrance took care of him and took him everywhere he needed to go. And he made sure Clifton never did without. He was also a member of our board of trustees. He and several others held title to the properties that Solid Rock owned. It was never Dave's church. I've heard that so many times. We're going over to Dave's church. Dave don't own nothing. I can't sign nothing. I can't even, I can't sign a check. I can't sign a loan. I, the, the trustees took care of the property and he was one of them. And, and so anytime we needed a loan or buy or sell property, whatever, we'd have to chase Torrance down on the job site and get him to sign for it. He was one of the six that we had. He was also our former sound man. He bought the board that we used back there. He would, and he had the whole system redone, and he always made it sound good, and he was a perfectionist when it came to how the sound system worked. But this is the thing. He was also our former minister of music, and although Torrance might have loved you dearly, he'd be the first to tell you that you can't sing. Yeah. It, that's right. He did. And, and, he, and, and if you did ever want to sing at Solid Rock, you had to audition. I don't care if you were a professional country music singer, he had to hear you first. And even if he, you could sing, he might refuse you if you were arrogant and weren't actually singing for the Lord. He literally revolutionized our music ministry and he spent, this is funny, but it's true. Let me have some water. I'm going to need some water out this. <laughs> He spent hour after hour with one accord and getting them to sound just right. But he also spent hour, spent hour after hour fussing, yelling, and standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Anna. She was a little mule. That's why I named her Anna Ruth. I named her Ruth after Festus' mule on Gunsmoke. <laughs> And he'd tell her, he said, I don't want to hear you say I can't do it. And she finally quit saying that to him. And she went on and did it. And that's why she has the boldness and all that she has now. He brought us Pastor Nicky Blanton and his precious wife. Did a lot of things to revolutionize their music ministry. He was a member of the Solid Rock Three, and they called it that, and Solid Rock Gentlemen. Most of the, the, one of the most dynamic Southern bluegrass gospel groups I have ever heard. Amen. Ever heard. They traveled all over the country and they've been on TV and they were wonderful ambassadors for the Lord. And I'm so glad that 
Steve was able to be here for that today. Y'all pray for Roger. He's really sick. He wasn't able to come. He really wanted to be here. And I miss that music so much. Uh, but all of it lives on. Uh, not only in recording, but in our hearts as well. Now, they showed it several times in here, and I'm going to have to take my jacket off to demonstrate. But whenever you saw Torrance doing that, you better get out the way. He was either going to say something very profound or punch your lights out. Bless his heart. He was very adamant on what he believed. <clears throat> I appreciate that. He was a real encourager to me when all the churches were closing. He'd private message me and he'd say, don't you pay no attention to them people. You keep it open. He left us very unexpectedly on Tuesday, October the 6th of this year. A big surprise to me and to everyone else. But I'm going to say this now, though. It won't no surprise to the Lord. He was ready for Torrance to come home. And, 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 you know, I know a lot of people asking why. And, you know, it's all right to ask God why. We're human. There are things that happens in our lives that we do not understand. And we may not understand until we stand in front of it. Then it won't make no difference, will it? But while we're here, sometimes we ask why. Why so soon? Well, an old black preacher shared this one time about a young lady in his church that had passed, and I thought this is probably about the most befitting thing I could think of, or to Luke chapter 19 and verse number 29. And it said, And it came to pass when Jesus was come near to Bethphage and Beth Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go over into the village against you, in which uh, entering in you'll find a colt tied, wherein yet man never sat. Loose him... And bring him here. And if any man asks you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said to them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners therefore said unto them, why do you loose the colt? And they said, the Lord hath need of him. And so the only explanation I can offer you right now is it was Torrance's time and the Lord had need of him. The Lord had need of him. Now you can imagine all of the people that he's with up there right now and being reunited and all that and y'all got to understand God likes a little music too. He invented it. And I'm sure Torrance is heading up some of that right now. I have no doubt in my mind. But for us, we all need to hear this. Because even though we are here to memorialize Torrance, we're here to bring glory to God and we're here to tell you the truth. Yes. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 said, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And the question is, what is that judgment like? The Bible says in Luke chapter 12 that there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. God knew Torrance's heart. He knew what was in it. He knew his every thought. He knew how Torrance felt toward him. And may I say he knows yours too. Everybody in here, no matter what, we, what facade we put on, no matter how we may sugarcoat something or how we may cover up something in our life, there ain't nothing going on in your life that God does not know. He knows the truth about all of us. And you know what blows me away? And I can't answer for y'all, but I can answer for me. God knows me and he still loves me. Amen. I don't know how in the world that can be. I really don't. But he does. And he loves you too. And Jesus said, therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which you have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Whew. That's a sobering thought, ain't it? But I'm going to say this, death was not a terror to Torrance. I believe if I'd ever heard Torrance say I'm scared about anything, that'd been the end of the world. He knew, though, he'd be safe with the Lord, no matter what was going on in his life. 
Jesus made this statement, and this is what we need to hear as well. He said, I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that can kill the body, and after that they have no more than they can do, that they can do. You don't need to be afraid of that. He said, well, I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed the body hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. He's talking about God. Fear God. Because God makes the determination where you are going when you die. And it's all contingent on what you did with Jesus Christ while you were here. Did you or did you not trust him as your savior? This is your opportunity at this very moment. It's too late when you're gone. Torrance did indeed fear the Lord. But I'm going to tell you this. The Lord was not Torrance's judge. He was his savior. People tell me all the time when I'll say something on, I, I'm, I'm a real troll on Facebook, buddy. I'm going to tell you what. They'll get on there, how dare you say that? Only God can be my judge. You better pray he's never your judge. You better pray he's your savior. You'd be better, way better off listening to me rant and rave because ain't nothing more I can do to you. But you better make him your savior because if he is your judge, you're in trouble. I don't want God to judge me. I want him to save me. Torrance's death did not go unnoticed by God. Jesus said, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. And I say unto you, Whoso, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Torrance did that over and over and over. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Torrance knew Jesus personally. There's a difference between knowing who Jesus is and knowing him personally. He was ready to go at any time when the Lord called him. Now comes the question, and I'll leave you with this. Are you ready? I'm not asking you if your wife or your husband or your mama or your daddy was saved. I'm not asking you if you are a member of a church. If you've been baptized, you can get dunked in the river so many times that the fish know you by your first name and still go to hell. Oh, I've held a position in church. I've done this and I've done No, 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 no. None of that matters. If you do not know Jesus personally, let's not put the cart before the horse. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way to heaven. You can't work your way there. You will just go to hell tired. You've got to accept the grace of God that's being offered to everyone here. And I'm telling you with all my heart this morning as I close, if I did not believe in a heaven and I did not believe in a hell, I would not waste my time in here right now. I would not. I'd be somewhere else doing something on, on the lake, maybe. But I believe it's real with all that is within me. I'm convinced it is. Torrance said how he got saved. God gave him a vision of hell one night and showed him going to the lowest levels. And he said he didn't wait to call a pastor. He didn't wait to do anything. He said, I got up and got down on my knees beside my bed and I accepted Jesus as my savior. What's it gonna take to get you to do the same? Heaven and hell are real people, they're real. And real people go to these real places when they die. Jesus is not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to the knowledge of Christ and be saved. How about you this morning? Are you willing to trust him? The only way you'll ever see Torrance again is if you go the same route he went. And that's through the cross. 
through the blood of Jesus. This morning, I'm gonna ask you if everyone would bow their heads for just a moment. We're going to give you an opportunity to do something you'll be glad you did 10 million years from now, and that is say yes to Jesus. When skies are getting dark and clouds are moving in, when the storms of life fill our hearts with pain, just let our Savior in, for when we trust in Him, He will lead us beyond the rain. Beyond the rain, there'll be no more dying, no more crying. No more pain When we put our lives In the hands of Jesus He will lead us Beyond the rain When we live our lives alone Try to make it on our own Still the heartache and emptiness remain If we hold on to God's hand He will take us to a land Where His sun will always shine Beyond the rain Beyond the rain There'll be no more dying No more crying no more pain when we put our lives in the hands of Jesus he will lead us beyond the rain now the battle has been won cause God sent his only son to fulfill the promise of his name and if only we believe what a gift we will receive to live with Jesus beyond the 